All right, so let's, let's get going today. So great, you guys. So everybody's uh, now well on their way down the project path. Um, so some of you guys uh, need uh, particular permits. And, uh, you know, so you guys can talk to me if you guys need help with permits or you have questions or not sure which ones to get. Uh, come, obviously, you're, you're, if you have an advisor to the Park Service or whoever, they, they would probably be the first person to talk to you. But definitely please come and talk to me. Um, or any other permits that, that you need help with, or if I'm your main, your main uh, content helper outer. Um, uh, we want to get rolling on those as quick as possible. And you need, as with several aspects of your project, you need to be the, the person pushing that, right? It's a tough thing. You don't want to be perceived as a pushy, jerky person bugging people, but... Um, Experience shows that if you get if you guys do need something like that, and it's gonna take more than a week or or something like that, uh, you need to be in the constant. Send a phone call today. Send an email tomorrow. Give a you know head by the office on Wednesday. You know that kind of thing, right? You want to keep in their face. Not we understand everybody's busy, but um, experience shows if you guys do not keep poking and progging and checking on the progress, uh, it, it, it uh, will oftentimes take months to get some of these permits. Um, so, so you want to keep working on that, uh, one. Uh, two, um, the next things uh, coming up to be due are your, an annotated bibliography. So that's 10 references. And you're going you're gonna to give me the reference and then you're going to give me at least at least one or two sentences. Uh, you can give me a little bit more if you want that that articulate what the value of this reference is. So you know Smith and Wilson, 2005. Uh, you know blah blah blah. The title of the journal, let's say, or whatever. Do 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 do. And then oh, this is a great reference on the background uh, conditions at Santa Rosa Island right now. Or this reference is um, uh, is a great descriptor of the background natural history. Or this is a great reference that showed uh, the learning that children had with this alternative uh, teaching module. You know, whatever it is. So um, uh, while your reference list will be much longer than 10 references, this first assignment is, is just the first 10. If you guys are having problems, you're casting about, you're trying to figure out, um, you know, how you're gonna how you're gonna tackle your problem, and you're not exactly sure yet. I mean, you have some vague ideas. Best idea is when you read some of the other papers that have been done on your subject or on your question, pay special attention to their introduction. That's where those folks are gonna put their, you know, global climate change is a big problem, and then you know, IPCC 2007. Like, oh, okay, that, that's uh, that's sort of a let me go look at that reference, right? So, so you might get all your references from going to doing, you know, a database search through the library. That's fine, but it's also totally legit to use what other people have used, right? That's that's we build on the knowledge of others. So it's not it's not cheating or it's not inappropriate to go and, and look at, um, you know, how others have set up the problem and the references they used to articulate the problem, right? So. Of course, build off of the work of others, build off of the, the scholarship of your predecessors, and that's all good. So 10 references to, uh, next, I say tomorrow, 10 references next week are due, and that's pretty straightforward. Um, I've not scheduled a uh, library research, uh, uh, sort of introduction to, to database searching here um, as I have in the past. I, I didn't find it necessarily particularly helpful, but I'm more than happy to help you guys out with finding stuff. If anybody's having any struggles or any trials, by all means, come by my office hours, or you guys can ask me questions, or I can help you. Um, but one of my most important suggestions to all of you is as you begin to go down the literature review background list, um, I think it's really, really helpful to have a spiral-bound notebook with you and to have it on the desk where you're working, and to jot down these key terms and key places you might have looked. 
So a lot of librarians now are big on saying, oh, this thing does all the journals, so you do one search, and that's great. But not every search is completely, uh, is, uh, there, there isn't one single spot that you can go and look, and it, it'll look through all the databases, all the nooks, all the crannies. So it's great for you guys to both keep track of what you searched for, the specific term or terms, but also the specific locations that you searched for. And by extension, possibly even the date range. So what I mean by that is, um, let's say uh, I searched, so um, uh, some of you guys are working on sand crabs. So maybe I typed in my search, uh, search window, uh, sand crabs, California. Or, or, or sand crabs maybe, right? Could do that. Maybe I would type in, alternatively, Emerita and Aloga, right, the, the, the Latin name. Maybe I would type in the Latin name that was used 20 years ago before now, right? All those are separate permutations. And it's very, very easy, especially when you guys are in this exploratory phase, like, dang, I can't find anything. What if I look for this? Okay, now, what if I look for that, right? And that's, that's fine, but drop those breadcrumbs. So you know, I, I, I looked for this specific series of letters and words back then, uh, you know, on this database, on that database, etc. Okay? So that, that's my main suggestion is, is, is keep a little uh, notebook where you guys are jotting that stuff down and put the date that you, you know, like, so today's whatever the, you know, October 5th or October 10th or whatever it is, <laughs> jot that down and that'll also help, help jar your, uh, jar your um, memory when you're going back to figure out what you need to do. Okay, um, the format for the references for all of our stuff in this class is the journal ecology. Now, there is a British, quote unquote, British Journal of Ecology, unquote. And then there is the journal, quote, ecology, quote, unquote. You want to use the American version, not the not the British version. If you're in doubt, you can also search for <coughs> Gesundheit, uh, ecological applications. So the, the, eco the Ecological Society of America publishes the journal Ecology, and they have several sister journals, ecological applications, ecological monographs, etc. And so, so uh, in the past when I've said use the journal Ecology, some people use the British Journal Ecology. So we're using the American version, the Ecological Society of America's formatting style. And if it's easier, just type in ecological applications uh, in, your, in your formatting thing. Uh, we've not talked about the bibli bibliographic software, um, which we will if we have time today, but, but um, for these first 10, uh, I think even now it's best if you guys can, should, can start using your bibliographic software of choice. We talked about that before about uh, uh, if you prefer the free online version, if you prefer the online version that's free for you as students, EndNote here through the library if you want to purchase your own. Um, uh, we'll talk more about that in the upcoming weeks, but, but uh, it's a perfect time for you guys to start using that, but you don't have to. Right. So right now you're mostly casting about looking for references, looking for uh, what would be some nice um, key, key references for your introduction. One other thing I should note, if I haven't already, is another great, what I used to do when I was stupid and young, and this was before the internet, right? so this is ancient times, I used to frequently, when I was Xeroxing things, I would have to physically Xerox things to get the journals to articles to read. I know, old. Um, and I used to not Xerox the references. It's like, what the hell, man? That's a lot more, there's a lot of pages there when you add a bunch of you know, references. And that just cost money and that was lame. Why would you ever want the references? That's probably the most lamest thing you can do, right? <laughs> because that's where, that's where there's a lot of great stuff. So even if you don't, um, when you're reading through articles, uh, a last step, if you're hunting for stuff, is after you finish reading the paper, just flip to the back and just skim through those references and see. Sometimes things will jump out at you there that maybe didn't jump out at you uh, in, the, in just the text of the, the author's description. So, 
So great. Okay, uh, two things you're due next week. One is that. Two is your first mock data set. And that's what I want to talk about today. Oh my God, we just started. I haven't got any data. What are you talking about? I, I don't know what this means. It's all good, right? Everybody can take a breath. This is, this is a first step exercise. Here's what you're going to do. What you're going to submit next week is, <clears throat> your, is, is, is fake data, basically, is what you're going to give me. All of you have a central question or a central hypothesis you want to explore. Uh, research is unpredictable. Research can go in, in all kinds of interesting ways. Oftentimes not the path we thought it would go down, but let's leave that aside for the moment. Let's assume that we go down the path that is super awesome, super straightforward, makes total sense, right? So that's the, that's the, the thing we're going to do right now. So. Um, how about this? Why don't a couple of you guys give me some of your hypotheses or your main hypotheses you're trying to test? Dorothy. Sand crabs ingest Okay, so sand crabs ingest ingest plastic. How about that? Okay, cool. Um, so uh, another common thing with many of us. So a lot of us are going to be doing field-based projects. We're out and about at a school, out on Santa Rosa Island, down at the beach, whatever the case may be. And you guys want to set up your data collection instruments such that they're really easy to use when you're out in the field. When maybe it might be raining, when maybe it might be windy, you know, all that kind of stuff. So you're going to have your field data sheets sometimes those are going to look exactly like your ultimate uh, data sheet, let's say, here in Excel. If that works out, that's fine. Oftentimes, it doesn't work out that way, right? Because it just makes so much more sense for you to have a couple blank places that are easier for you to write logistically in the field. And, and, and when, you, when you come to enter them, they're going to be in a different format. So what I'm talking about here, I'm not talking about you guys making a field data sheet. I'm talking about what I want from you guys is an example of the, the data archive that you're going to have, let's say, at the end of your project. And it's important to do this because we're thinking not only of what data we want to get, but how are we going to do the statistical test? How are we going to do the analysis to, to, to test the, the core hypothesis or the series of hypotheses? Okay, so here we go. So the first question is, sands and, uh, do sand crabs ingest sand... Pl uh, geez. Do sand crabs ingest plastic? And so what are the key things you're going to test on that, uh, Dorothy? Um, I'm looking for it to see if there's anything in there first, at all. Okay. Um, and where they are, and then because they live in the sand, okay. testing the sand to see if there's anything in the sand as well. Okay, let's start off that. So the first thing you said was you're going to, you want to test the, test the organism, see if they have anything, right? So we're going to have something like, I would guess, maybe, uh, sample number something like that right sample and again this is i'm just making this up off the top of my head so there's probably more elegant ways to do this but but it's a first draft so, okay i'm gonna have some about the sample number maybe what maybe the date you collected it right. location. okay location um, sizes. There's three for sizes. okay so size in something like millimeters or something and you have you have a bunch of sizes so there's size yeah, like length, width, and length. okay all right so we, we have several sizes what else Okay. 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 So a, eggs, other things. Okay. And then uh, something about parasites. Okay. And then plastic, right? Yeah, plastics or fibers. Plastic count, plastic type. Yeah. Okay, so plastic type and plastic count. And plastic description. Okay, always good to have notes in there. Okay, so here we go. 
here's our here's our putative, or or at least at least the first stab. Maybe there might be a lot more uh, columns in here eventually when you start doing it. But this will this will sort of give us an idea, right? Okay, so we have some things here, and uh, we're, and and so what you guys can do is the first step is you're going to go through and make the the columns for the 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 variables and the factors that you're going to be measuring, right? So that's going to go across the top, generally speaking. All right. So then we're going to have something like sample one and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, da, 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 da. And so we have the date and uh, what's it? Let's say it's eight, ten, six, ten, five, fifteen. And so maybe we got these guys here. Sorry. Okay, maybe we got these guys on the 6th. Okay, and so forth. Okay, then we have, we have beach, we're having them from beach A and beach A and beach B and beach B and beach C and beach C and beach D and beach D and E and E, etc. <clears throat> what I want you to get, yeah. You would assign your locations letters? No, no I, 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 so I would, I would fill these out I'd fill your data sheet out exactly like you think it would be. So don't don't just type in fake letters or whatever. I would type in the actual site. Yeah, Malibu, uh, Rincon, Betcher's Bay. I would write all the stuff for real out there, okay? And and fill all this out. What I want you to do is I want you to fill this out in the most ideal way that you would like stuff to to occur or how you'd like stuff to occur. Okay. So maybe we're going to have this. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, so are you hoping to see plastics in everything? Yeah. Okay. So then we would say uh, fiber, right? Fiber, 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 pellets, pellets, pellets. And there's a thousand and two hundred and twenty and and four hundred. Okay, <laughs> fine, fine. Four, two, twelve, fifteen, one, three, six, seven, whatever. Right, that kind of stuff. Right. We're gonna go through there, and so uh, right. So. When we go, so then we can ask the question: Are there is there plastic? And in this case, that that's a pretty obvious one. And if we had any th any numbers that were above uh, zero, that would that would prove Dorothy's hypothesis that these pieces of plastic are in there. But let's pick something a little more harder. Who else has it? Who has another? Who has another hypothesis or another project? Yeah, Jay. Um, are the oak tree groves on Black Mountain growing or shrinking throughout the period of time? Oak tree groves growing. Okay. So what are your key variables there? Um, or the key things you're going to measure? Uh, you're using GIS, just polygoning. Okay, so you're going to do a mapping effort. And then after you've done all the work on the, on the transformation, the inspection, <clears throat> and the categorizing, uh, what are you going to take away from that map? Are you going to have a, a attributes table you're going to spit out from that? Or what are you going to do? Okay, so, so so thoughts. So how might how might Jay, you guys, how might Jay set up a, a data sheet to test his hypothesis, which, which is that things are growing or shrinking? Like on the perimeter of your groves, you can go and look at whether or not the trees are young or, or old, alive, or dying. Okay, so we can we can have grove, maybe, and we can have we have grove number, let's say, or do you have number or names for your groves? Uh, numbers. Number. Okay, so grove number, and then. And then the idea is uh, edge, edge, uh, age, is that, or height, or how, how would you do that? How would you can take like DBH height um, to see which ones are like mature trees compared to like seedlings and saplings. Okay, so maybe we could do something like this. We could do, um, we could do DBH, and let's say, let's call this tree, tree number, something like that. So we'd have we'd have grove number is one 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 right it goes on for a long time maybe we'd have grove number two 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 right 
Then over here we'd have maybe tree number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven, number eight, number nine. Now maybe J has a unique tree numbering thing. So maybe in grove number two, the next group of trees start with 10, 11, 12, or maybe they restart. Maybe we have trees per grove numbered. How, you know, it's, it's, this is how you guys choose to do that. Then over here we have DBH. So this guy is, I don't know, 20, and this guy is 14, and 2, and 3, and 5, and 14, and 18, right? That kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, and uh, then this would be maybe location, something like that. Edge, maybe this would all be edge. Maybe this would be core. Is it making sense? Yeah. Right? And so then we can go through here and you guys can begin to say, ah, oh, if I really. And so the idea is the hypothesis would be um, if you had a bunch of young guys on the edge, it would be growing. Is that the, is that the thought? What you guys are thinking? Kind of, yeah. Or, or no. Well, one of the other things we're looking at is if they're uh, cloning or if they're actually dispersing acorns. So that's another kind of big question. So you measure that per tree? Like, like how, many, how many acorns are around the tree kind of thing? Okay, okay, so connected to other trees, maybe? Something like that, a yes or, yeah, oops, wow. Okay, so trunks, so you guys would have all these, all these, all these variables that could go out, right? And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna structure your data for me that shows that indeed the edge has whatever, smaller dBH compared to the core, let's say. Or there's more uh, subsurface connections uh, than in the core. Or there's more trunks per, per individual, you know, that kind of stuff, right? So you guys set this data up in your most ideal way. So the first step, the, 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 our first mental exercise is to go through this and figure out what exactly are the variables that we want to be recording. Two, put them in a way that makes sense. Put them in a format that we'll be able to test and, and organize. And then three, just say under the most ideal conditions, what would I love to have? What would I love to walk away from in a couple months with? That'd be awesome. The reality is it won't look that way. Or for most of you, it won't look that way. And that's okay. But we need to know what it would look like should should things you know go in one route and then the next step after this we'll, we'll sort of say what, what might it look like if it's if you know in other words this one might be a significant difference between the edge and the core what might it look like if it were not a significant difference okay uh other thoughts other other th so is, is everybody starting to see how, would, how you guys can make this up so again don't if you have some data if you have some real data right now that'd be great Go ahead and throw that in, and then you can just tweak it a little bit. Oh, it'd be great if that was twice as high, or that was twice as many, or, or something like that. Um, is anybody having some, uh, somebody that hasn't collected data yet? Maybe like, maybe we we'll want somebody that can volunteer that hasn't collected data yet, and, and what your question is, and we can try to run through a, a fake data. I'm just kind of wondering, because I'm doing more of a baseline. Mm -hmm. So, I'm trying to so what's, your, what's your key hypothesis then, or, 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 or central that's question? Okay, well, I'm like, that's why I'm kind of confused because in my abstract I talked about how I'm doing, I want to start a, a baseline for the lagoons to see their general health for, as far as water quality and vegetation. Okay, so, so Aspen's wor working on characterizing the existing condition of a particular community. So what, what would you guys, what were your suggestions? So, so is this... Is this community healthy, or or something like that, or what is the state of this community? So what might what might you guys want to toss down as a as a first step? Location. Location. Okay. Go ahead. Could I like their surveys? 
uh, that we just did a survey? No, like if you're going to, because you're testing the, like where the river mouth is, right? I'm, well, I'm doing, it's mostly water quality so far. Okay, so definitely like what kind of vegetation is there? Yeah, just an overall picture kind of thing. Dev? So uh, water quality analysis just started yeah. uh, like, like what it is. So temperature, uh, uh, P, pH. Uh, total sus total suspended solids, uh, oxygen, yeah, DO, right? That because we have we have those things, right? Cool. Yeah, you also just said uh, visual characters too. Does it look? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna be taking pictures, so that'll be something separate. Okay, okay. So one, so one. Uh, uh, while not. So that's definitely something you guys want to have in your in your master database, which is what what not just what is. What is my data? What is the metadata? So what, what did I collect about this? Did I have other stuff that maybe maybe is not water quality but would help me interpret like pictures, like like descriptive notes in a in a uh, in a journal or in a in a blog. So you might want to have a note about that, you know, so so photo, photo, and then maybe yes, and then something like photo or, or photo file name. Right, and this would maybe SRI zero nine nine uh, zero seven six JPEG, something like that. So I can go back and oh, that's the exact, it's the exact one. You're gonna say something, Tim? So I was saying it's, a, it's more like a, a qualitative thing. So you say algal presence like zero one one zero. Mm-hmm. Uh, so recent rains, you mean yeah. recent precipitation or something? Recent precipitation or something? Okay, cool. What about soil analysis? Yeah, you can have something about soils. So we can keep going with this. So let's say we have all these things. We have stuff that goes off to the right, let's say, about our description. So, but Aspen's key question here, though, is, um, so one is what am I going to do? But two, but two um, how is this going to answer, more important for this exercise, how is this going to answer some question, test some hypothesis? So in her case, she's doing a base, she's a, a, a characterizing current conditions. And so, so what do you guys think? Uh, I know Ben did a macro invertebrates analysis of some of the water systems out there that possibly uh, copy some of his methods and look for uh, insects. Sure, we could copy, we could re re repeat either what people have done before or we could uh, maybe even just get their data and have that, so that's cool. So one thing might be to compare your site to other sites, right? So even if you're not gonna go to other sites or even if you weren't here in 1990, right? Maybe you find some sites that, that have some conditions. And so what this could be is you might also wanna have in here something like yeah, so, something like date, right? Sampling date. And uh, that might even be, maybe even want to have something like this. Maybe we want to have the date that it was actually sampled, but then a broader category like year. Because maybe Aspen's going to sample in on October 10th and October 15th, and November 3rd and December 4th, right? And yes, those are different dates and we should keep track of that, but from, the com from her, her main comparison, which is how does this place compare to other places or how does this point in time compare to other points in time, maybe we want something that just says something like, let's say 2015. So we have all the detailed dates, but then we can have a bunch of sites from several trips or several, several monitoring endeavors and then when she goes and finds, let's say, one of our, our colleagues, one of you guys, uh, uh, one of our alumni's uh, uh, data, the data of one of our alumnus, I don't, I, I'm not speaking properly this morning. In any event, somebody else's data, right? We can throw that in. So maybe we get some data from 2014, and maybe we find this study, because you're doing this great background literature review that from 1983, uh, uh, right? Big hair, flock of seagulls and all that crap. 
So we, we can get that stuff going on. And we can come in here and we can start to put this, we can start to populate this, right? Maybe, maybe Aspen is going to take 30, or take readings over 30 different days. Maybe this report, though, she finds from the Park Service or that's online uh, is just going to say, well, oh, the temperature ranged from X to X, right? <laughs> or the average temperature was X. So in that case, maybe she's going to want to have her own data, the stuff that she's collecting, but then she's going to want to have another sheet that's going to be the comparison. So in that comparison sheet, if, if the data she has to compare it to are range data, maybe we would have a temperature min column and a temperature max column. Maybe we would have an average daytime temperature, you know, whatever the case may be. So that she can take all her, 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 her much more detailed assessment and boil that down, put it in an apples to apples comparison with Joe Blow's data from years ago. And so that would be, that's going to be the key data that I'm going to want to see next week, right? So in other words, what's the data that you're going to test? And so if Aspen, are you hoping to see that it's healthier or better? Or what are you hoping to see? Uh, well, or what are you predicting? But what do you predict? Are you predicting? Do you think the do you think this system is getting healthier, or this system has always been healthy, or what um, do you think? I think it's getting healthier. Okay, so so she wants to say it's been getting healthier. So then so then the data that you're gonna again this is fake data. This is fake data right now. So so don't kill yourself, right? But but so maybe if we did that, maybe we had some data in uh, 1969, and the DO was 50 percent, right? And then maybe we had some data in 1979, and maybe the DO was 57%. Uh, maybe this maybe, maybe this is mean. Maybe this is maybe this is daily mean or something, right? Uh, all the caveats come along with this. Did, did we sample the same way? You know, same time of year, all that stuff. But let's leave that aside for the specific moment. Then we have some data from 1987. 1992, 2001, because the world changed, and then 2009, and then, and then maybe one of our colleagues, uh, some of your colleagues' data, and then maybe your data, right? And so, uh, in, other, in other words, the ideal thing that Aspen was hoping to see is that maybe it was cruddy all throughout here, and maybe it was cruddy all throughout here. And then we pulled the cattle off, maybe, or whatever, changed the grazing behavior or whatever. And maybe it went up to this. And then maybe, oh, what the heck happened there? 75%. Maybe it went up to 86%. And then here is 90%. And here is 92%, or something like that, right? So that's going to be this data, right? So ask. So maybe the only thing that you guys collected was this one row in, in this particular example, right? And the other stuff is mostly coming from your literature review <clears throat> of either primary literature or gray literature or what have you. And that's totally cool, right? That's, that's going to be your main assessment. So you're, you, everyone here is testing something. Whether or not you are going to be collecting all that data that you're going to test, you are collecting data and you're going to tell us something new, a new insight about our world and or the management of our world. Does that make sense? Anybody else? Anybody else have a have one that they're not sure how that would fit, how, how their data uh, that they maybe not started collecting yet, how, how they could squeeze it into this sort of fake data format that I'm talking about? What if you have like 50 something research questions that you're asking? Mm. You have a really okay, large... so we got a bunch of questions. We got a bunch of questions, let's say. Um, and, and of course, you guys should look at all those research questions or try to look at all those research questions, but you should still have a main, a main overarching question. So, so tell me three of your 50 questions. Okay, well, the main one is like, does proximity to humans have an effect on poison? So does proximity, if, okay, so here we go. So, so does, does proximity, I can't spell it, proximity, uh, impact uh, variable. Okay, what's the next one? Uh, are there microplastics in the sand? Are there microplastics in the sand? And next? Uh, uh, the trash cleanups that we did, are they impacting our in-fauna health? 
did so correlation between trash and and in fauna yeah okay so so th there's three there's three hypotheses that may on um, their face of it maybe look unrelated can anybody look at those and, and see if you can provide a and, and I'm not saying you shouldn't test those those hypotheses but can you guys think of one overarching hypothesis that would uh, um, uh, pull all that stuff together Okay, okay, so we, we could do something like a time one and time two. Cool, but I like that, but, but let's hold that thought for a second. What's, the over, what's an overarching hypothesis? Got all these things. Look at all this stuff. Yes, so there you go. So something like that, which is... Um, uh, do humans impact this system, right? And these are all just sub sub questions of that. Yeah. So then, um, so uh, then I would I, and and again, th th this first data, sh this first fake data doesn't have to be every single last little piece of ounce of data that you collect, right? This is more your. Your, your biggest central thing. So all of you guys, for example, are gonna have to get, uh, or, or not gonna have to, you will naturally, it'll, it'll happen. It, doesn't, it might seem like it now. There's gonna be a key thing, right? You guys are gonna have to start wor working on our uh, elevator talks. 30 seconds. What did you find in 30 seconds? Oh my God. <laughs> I, there's a thing, and then I studied, <clears throat> time's up, no, right? So we're eventually going to get to the point where you guys are going to walk up and go, "Hey, how's it going? Uh, my name's Sean Anderson. I saw that I saw that you um, had a, a great talk on uh, ocean pollution. I've been working on ocean pollution for a long time. Been looking at oil spills and plastics, and I found there's this really interesting correlation between uh, human settlement and the amount of pollution that's on a beach. It'd be great if we could talk about that in a little bit, right? Or, or, or something. I just made that up off the top of my head, but you, you know what I'm saying. You guys are going to get to that point." It doesn't seem like it now, but you will. And so, so in this case, all these things, which are great and really interesting and all kinds of wonderful subjects for investigation and thinking and, and graphing and analyzing, but we need to be able to boil it down to people that don't know what the hell you're doing. We need to give them an entry to your subject, right? So the big overall thing. And, and for some of us, and for some, if some of it, it just might be, uh, do humans impact the environment? Is the change of this resource problematic? Uh, is a change even occurring? Does this thing exist? Does this phenomenon exist? Right? Those are all fine entry level uh, points upon which you can build and, and get more detail and give, give more evidence and stuff, right? Does that make sense, Vanessa? Yeah. Okay, so then Vanessa's main, uh, you know, over, overarching hypothesis is, uh, do humans impact this system? Or state as a hypothesis, humans impact this system, right? What, what might we, so how might we, so what, so tell me some of the things you're gonna, you're in your deal. So you have your, your site, you have your, uh, uh, date and this and that. What else do you have? Okay, so so lat and lawn maybe. Okay. What are some what are some of your key variables you're looking at? So substrate. Okay. Uh, what does that mean? That means total number of richness or what does that mean? Or, or, okay. Okay. So this is this is species one. Species. This is this is maybe uh, um, number of species one. Maybe this is number of species two. Maybe this is number of species three on, onwards, right? And then maybe this one is size of species one, size of species two, etc. Right? Something like that. Mm -hmm. 
So we go through there and we populate this and maybe this would be this would be one site maybe for the first 10 or whatever. Gesundheit. And this one might be half of 10 might be sand, half of 10 might be rock. And then this is, you know, and we can we can go through we can go through the list and populate it that way, right? And so again, uh, most of you guys are are going to be trying to create fake data for me that shows clear differences between these categories, these groups of kids, these these beaches, these time periods, whatever the case may be, right? And again, it's fake data. It's fake data. So go ahead and make them, you know, again, the, your most ideal possible thing, which you would be totally stoked if, it, if things went this way, right? Super easy. Don't need insane, uh, you know, tweaking of the data and, and adjustments of the data. Just straight up, oh my God, it's totally obvious. Even the three-year-old can tell that there's a difference between these things, right? The reality is it'll be usually very hard to tell if there's a difference and that's okay, but let's start with assuming that there's going to be radical differences between each of our, our groupings. Anybody else? Anybody else having um, some thoughts or, or wondering about uh, how they can fit their data into their fake, into a, into a, a, a fake um, a data sheet? Yeah. So I'm getting the tour time. Right. So we, we've already started, like, you know, you have our data sheets. Great. Before. Sure. Yeah. Now, some of you guys might have one type of data that's one that, that is, is clearly um, if it's relatively easy to get all your data on one data sheet, you might want to do that. For many of you, that won't be possible or, or it just doesn't make sense. It's totally cool to have multiple data sheets. Right. So maybe one would be something some field surveys. Maybe one data sheet would be uh, a laboratory based or greenhouse based experiment. Right. Maybe data sheet number three might be some opinion polling you're doing of people or something, right? That's all good. For the purpose of this exercise, you guys only need to give me one fake data sheet. This is, this is like our first step. So even if in your head you're going to have three clearly cl clear different sets of data, they're going to be organized differently in, in different tabs or different workbooks, just pick whatever the most important data set is and just you know, overarching data set and give me that one. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. Other questions? No. Awesome. Everybody totally knows what's going on. That's awesome. Okay, great. Uh, so um, we have a, a couple minutes here. So just to reiterate, so you guys, so for next week, you guys are submitting um, your uh, fake data sheets and a 10 or, or, or and an annotated bibliography of 10 references. Um, now, w again, to reiterate, we're building towards in you know two months or whatever, you guys are going to submit your introduction for your, uh, for, for your study, for, for your, your paper. So the hope is that these references are, are you know, used in that introduction. If stuff changes, if you order these references and you get them, maybe some are, are interlibrary loan, they might take a little while, and you end up getting them, and oh, this one is totally not what the author said, and it's totally not helpful, you do not have to, I'm, I'm not gonna require all 10 of these show up in your report, but most of you guys, these will, these will tend to show up, right? Um, the other thing I wanna just note about, uh, as you guys are starting to look for stuff, um, uh, depending on what what route you use and 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 what what interface you use and this and that, uh, the the source of the of the reference, the actual the actual paper itself, might be easy to get, might be hard to get. So clearly, the first step should be going looking at our interlibrary loan. And, or excuse me, look, excuse me, look at our, our, our library holdings and seeing if we have that or have a current subscription or whatever, and that's great. But a lot of what we do is related to management. A lot of that kind of stuff, let's say the Park Service report from 1972, not, probably not going to be in our library, probably not going to be super easy to find on interlibrary loan right and that's okay that's okay 
So um, it's, it's good for you guys to start on this search and this hunt now, sooner rather than later, because some of these things will take a while to hunt down. But the other thing that's increasingly becoming a source for you guys to go find or, or, or to use, obviously I know you guys all go use Google, Google Scholar, uh, and you, I want you guys using the library resources. But another one is this increasing number of, of sources of uh, references on the web. And so realize that um, increasingly when people publish something, so, so we have open access journals, right? Where everything is, you guys click on it and Michaela gets it and it's free and it's no problem. And if Michaela's here, it's free and it's no problem. And if Michaela's in Kenya, it's no problem, etc. Then we have the traditional publishing houses that have restrictions that make her pay if she wants to get this journal article, let's say, right? So in response to that, there's been this movement of, of so-called open publishing or open access publishing. And what everybody agrees is if I'm the author, I can do whatever the hell I want with my paper in the sense that uh, it might be in this restricted journal, this restricted place on the web that you would normally have to pay for. But if it's my paper, I can put my paper on my website, right? Because it's my my, I did it, right? Increasingly, people might have been saying that, well, if we paid for this with public funds, National Science Foundation funds, NIH funds, Park Service funds, uh, why should I, as a citizen at least, be paying for that? So, so um, if you guys are having trouble finding a reference, so go talk to one of our wonderful librarians. They can totally help you guys track stuff down if you're having a hard time. But another thing is to just search the person's name, one of the author or author's names, and go look at their website. Increasingly, you'll find on that person's website the actual, especially if it's a hard to find thing or it's a restricted access thing, you can find the uh, thing. 